An important way to gain the upper hand in any skirmish, battle, or war is to use effective methods to counter the enemy's attack. There are several ways one can do this. One could counterattack with infantry, tanks, or indirect fire. Another way that works well to blunt attacks or harass the enemy is to employ snipers. Snipers are the perfect tool to instill fear in the enemy and pin down large numbers of troops at the expense of just one soldier. Over time, novel ways have been created to counter snipers, and one such method has been the use of sniper decoys. Despite their lore and popular history, it's debatable how effective sniper decoys are on the battlefield. While there certainly have been some effective uses for sniper decoys in the past, their utility today is less. But when wars were less technologically advanced, they actually worked pretty well. During World War I, they saw sustained use when snipers first started to become mainstream and had dedicated training schools. Snipers served in various roles, with one of the main ones being to kill enemy officers and force soldiers to keep their heads down in a trench to conceal their own troop movements. Snipers in World War I were also incredibly difficult to spot. It was impossible to attack them because no one could be exactly sure of their location. Broken and pockmarked landscapes hid snipers from view and provided ample opportunity for them to hide just about anywhere. The First World War was not just limited to the mud and the trenches, with plenty of fighting occurring in urban areas. Here, this was a sniper's playground, and the sniper could be on the roof of a building, in a sewer, hiding among the rubble, and just about any other place you could imagine. Early on, it was decided that there would have to be some kind of techniques device to uncover a sniper's location. Once it had been found, you could either destroy it or simply go around the sniper. Thus, the system of sniper decoys was developed to solve this dilemma. While the best weapon to find and take out a sniper is another sniper, most infantry soldiers did not have the luxury. Instead, their best chance to find a sniper was to identify the location themselves and then pound the area with artillery fire. In trying to figure out where the sniper was located, they needed to first present an enticing target. While putting a full mannequin dummy in the open would surely be obvious, creating a dummy head peering just around a corner or above a trench might actually do the trick. While you might be thinking that a dummy head looks nothing like a real head, you have to realize that back then their rifle scopes were much less powerful and of lesser quality than the ones produced today. Combine that fact with poor weather and chronic sleep deprivation, and that paper mache art project starts to look pretty close to the real deal. To make the trick even more enticing, the soldiers would dress the head to look like an officer of their army. These targets would prove quite tempting to snipers, since taking out an officer might leave that section of the line leaderless and could have been the only thing keeping the men in order. In creating the heads, they were usually just made of paper or paper mache if the soldiers had access to glue and the weather permitted. The head was placed in an area where the enemy army sniper was suspected to be present. This was usually done before moving on to any new area or important objective with a large body of troops. The reason for doing so was simple. If a sniper's presence was not identified, a large body of troops marched towards a new area could give the enemy snipers plenty full targets that could cause chaos. More importantly, a sniper firing many shots could alert the enemy to troop movements and they could also simply report the movements back to their own soldiers. In the event that the sniper fell for the trick, it probably would not end well for him. After firing at the head, even if he missed, the other side could confirm two things. First, was the fact that there was a sniper present at all. Second, was his location. While it might seem difficult to determine where exactly a sniper is just by looking at a shot target, it's actually quite simple. The concept itself rests on the Pythagorean theorem. By looking at the entry wound's angle on the fake head, a soldier could then draw a straight line distance from where the mannequin was facing and determine a rough angle from there. Next, a soldier would have to count how many seconds passed before the crack of the rifle was heard. Because the velocity of an enemy's rifle was a known quantity, one could determine the rough distance by calculating how fast the bullet would move in a second. They could also determine a second distance and angle by using a known anchor point such as a building or a tree. The soldiers would then have two distances and two angles, making the calculation simple to determine exactly where the sniper was located. Just like the old adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, the same concept was applied to sniper decoys. They were used with great success, and snipers started to take heavy casualties from counterfires being rained down on them. However, soon snipers started to realize what the trick was all about and began their own methods of using the decoys against the same soldiers employing them. One of the methods snipers developed was to purposefully target sniper decoys when they knew they were decoys and have a second sniper waiting to see the enemy pop up. 
Soon, soldiers started becoming wiser to this trick as well and developed their own method of countering the countermeasure. One of the ways they started doing this was to make the decoys look more lifelike and real, dressing them up in uniforms, putting a rifle next to the mannequin, and other little tricks to make decoys more enticing. One of the most creative was the addition of lit cigarettes attached to surgical tubing. Such measures were actually quite convincing, and it was reported that again high numbers of snipers fell victim to such ploys. One might wonder why a sniper might fall victim to an inanimate object. As explained by Vasily Zaitsev, one of Russia's most famous snipers from World War II, initially the sniper may easily spot a decoy and not be fooled by its presence. However, psychology and natural curiosity intervene. When the sniper sees the same decoy every day, they can become careless toward them. However, while they may also be thinking that this is surely an enemy soldier and contradict himself, Zaitsev warned against this natural tendency. For snipers to stick to their gut instincts that a target appears to be a dummy, it is a dummy. Otherwise, firing without a clear target leads to the sniper potentially revealing their position for nothing. Despite the mind tricks that would be played on snipers, as advances in sighting systems increased, the likelihood that an enemy detecting a decoy also increased. These telescopic methods made it easier to spot the target and check if it was a real human or a dummy placed to trick the sniper. Even though there were new tactics and technology to detect sniper decoys, the way that decoys were employed continued to evolve. Most recently, during the U.S. invasion of Iraq in 2003, U.S. soldiers reported that the Iraqi military employed living decoys in order to draw U.S. fire away from Iraqi soldiers. These human shields were civilians tasked with masking the movements of the Iraqis. While not trying to trick a sniper per se, these civilians were used to negate the incredible U.S. advantage and force snipers to think twice about firing. In lieu of isolated incidents, the use of decoys has become less as new technologies continue to develop in modern warfare. The main reason for improving the counter-sniping craft has been increased field intelligence and intelligence gathering techniques. Thermal sensors, better aircraft, drone surveillance, and human intelligence help determine whether a target is a human or not, and make dummy decoys a lot less likely to succeed. A paper dummy does not emit the same amount of heat as a human. Thus, the sniper rifles with modern equipment can easily determine whether the target is real or fake. While this tactic has fallen out of favor with Western-style armies, it's still used to some extent by other armies. During the current Saudi-led war in Yemen, it's been reported that paper dummies have been used for routing out and eliminating Houthi snipers. This tactic itself has reportedly met little success, and the Saudi troops were forced to make other measures to mask the dummy's appearance, such as starting fires to create smoke. Even though Western armies, and specifically the US Army, do not use decoys anymore, they're no longer needed on the battlefield. One of the main reasons for that is because new technology has been developed to do digitally what the decoy used to do. A new man-portable device called the PackBot has been created to detect a sniper's bullet bearing and range. The device uses the same dead reckoning technique of calculating the bullet's distance combined with creating an angular formula on where the bullet came from. The device has already seen service in both Iraq and Afghanistan with favorable reports from the field. In testing, it was shown that it could predict the bearing and range of a shooter with up to 94% accuracy on several common rifle and pistol calibers, and that is pretty impressive. If that were not enough, the previous art of detecting where a sniper fired from has become a dedicated science. The US Army has been regularly hosting an annual acoustic symposium since 1992, and they have converted all the data from snipers firing into easily usable data. One of the main ways they have done this is by using infrared light and acoustic collection. By setting up an acoustic collection around urban areas, users can instantly collect data about where a shot came from. Additionally, infrared cameras can easily tell the trajectory and flight path of bullets in flight. Both of these technologies combined have proven quite useful to the US Army for years. Sniper decoys at first proved to be a useful tool. In World War I's trenches, where casualties from sniper attacks were massive, all sides turned to countermeasures to defeat this emerging threat. By employing this tactic, snipers can temporarily be defeated while they regroup to come up with more ingenious inventions to defeat this new countermeasure. This created a cat and mouse game as snipers and soldiers alike tried new ways to defeat one another using more ingenious methods than before. However, as scope and surveillance technology increased, the effectiveness of decoys went down. As warfare has progressed into today's age, fewer armies are relying on this age-old tactic. Though the sniper decoy is not employed very often in its original form, forces like the US military have still kept the same concept for the technology by creating new means of detecting snipers. Some of these new methods are quite ingenious and include everything that modern advancements can bear. But despite it all, at the end of the day, the average soldier will still have to think on his or her feet 
if they want to root out and defeat enemy snipers, since nothing can beat human ingenuity. Now, go check out the top 10 military rifles around the world, or click this video here.